pests in a vegetable garden can cause so many problems. They, they often like our crops as much as we do. So we need to inform ourselves and we need to observe very closely what's going on, which is all easy to say, isn't it? So I'm going to show you some specific examples of how to keep pests off certain crops at certain times of year. It's now the middle of May here at Homemakers, Southwest UK. Quite an abundant time, as you can see from the garden behind me. And also how you can see there are not many crops actually covered, for example, against pests to keep them off. Uh, but specific ones are, and they absolutely need it. For example, here is beetroot. So this beetroot was planted late March from a February sowing. And then it's been covered all its life, in fact. So I had a fleece cover over it originally, and that kept the rabbits off as well as keeping the cold winds off. And now it's got a net over, which is against birds. This is a very simple UV treated polypropylene net. It's five, six, seven years old. I've used it every year in, that, in those years. So it's got a long life. It's a really good investment. It's four meters wide. That means it'll cover easily uh, most beds with a bit of edge that you can just, in, in, in this case, keep it down with stones or whatever, you, however you choose to just keep it down there. And for me, it's stopping the birds eating the leaves. So in this case, it would be sparrows. They just love beetroot leaves. Without that, there'll be lots of holes in the leaves. The net over the beetroot I was just showing you is not always necessary. You wouldn't need it if your garden did not have sparrows coming to eat the beetroot leaves. So sometimes you just have to plant things and see what might happen. But be prepared, have some netting, some covers ready uh, before you begin. And for example, here's a different kind of net, which is suitable for keeping out butterflies. The one over the beetroot with a wider mesh, they're about half inch there, is too wide and would let butterflies in if that's what you were trying to keep off. Whereas this one, the holes are about five millimeter, one fifth of an inch, and a butterfly, unless it was a bit of a Houdini butterfly, won't get through that. So you could put this over, for example, cabbages, calabrese, cauliflowers in the summer and autumn to keep the butterflies off that will otherwise lay eggs on your leaves which turn into caterpillars that eat the leaves. So you just need to support that with something over your crop. It's sometimes risky if you just put a net on the leaves because then a butterfly can lay its eggs through the net. Just stick its little egg laying bit onto the leaves and that can cause damage. So you need some support of sometimes a wooden frame, wire hoops, whatever it might be. Here I'm beside a crop which almost always needs some protection. One of the hardest vegetables to grow in terms of pests, carrots. And partly it's because the seeds are very tiny, they take a long time to go, and then slugs often eat them. And I've actually had some slug damage in this bed, and the slug damage has been much worse uh, for the, at the further end where the seeds were not organically biodynamically grown this end the biodynamic seeds have given stronger plants and the carrots have grown better. So that's one little thing one could do. But then this mesh is to keep off the main pest of the carrot which is carrot root fly and that's a fly that lays its eggs on the soil. They turn into little maggots that burrow down and eat the carrot and really make quite a mess tunneling through the root. So all being well this mesh will keep that fly off it doesn't always work 100%. Sometimes I think they crawl under the edge. But you can see also how the carrots are pushing the mesh up. I haven't had the carrot on from day one on these, the, sorry, the mesh on day one for the carrots because the carrot seedlings, when they're very tiny, are, are quite tender. So I actually covered them initially with fleece and you can see some fleece here. Fleece is different to mesh. It's softer and lighter, warmer. 
but less good at keeping all pests out because it tends to get holes where birds or um, rooks quite like fleece actually for making their nests so they come along and peck holes and take bits away with them. But you can see the fleece here is protecting in this case some chard against against um, again birds um, particularly this red chard there's a weed onion in that one um, this red chard is much loved by the, the sparrows I mentioned already so I need, unfortunately here where we've got a lot of sparrows, I need to get some kind of cover on my chard all through the growing season. In my previous garden I didn't need to, so it just shows how variable this kind of thing can be. Whereas carrots, most of the year I reckon to keep them covered with mesh like this. Mesh is very durable, very long lived, you can use it many many times, like 10, 12, 15 years consecutively. So although it's quite expensive to buy, you will get good value out of it. Fleece on the other hand lasts maybe two, three years uh, before it starts to go into many pieces. It's still very worthwhile. Um, both these covers have many uses uh, for many crops. Lettuce for me is a very valuable crop. It produces so much to harvest and it is pretty much liked by a lot of different insects and birds, but more particularly birds. And so I find it worthwhile just to keep a net over it the whole time, just standard bird netting, half inch, 12 millimeter size gauge, and that stops them pecking the leaves. It also stops blackbirds, for example, love to come and look for worms in the compost on the beds here, and have a little dig, and then that flicks compost all over the leaves, and makes them hard to wash. So it's just kind of worthwhile to do that. It's very simple, and you know, when we're picking every week, we just roll the stones away and flip the net over and pick and then pull it back again so easy and water goes through obviously that can be a problem with covers that you can't always see like with the fleece and mesh what is going on and a net is is one of the best from that point of view because it's so visible and then behind me is an example of a crop that had a cover on when it was young so these peas I planted six weeks ago and they've been there under a fleece cover um, for the first three or four weeks while they were just getting going through April. It's now the middle of May and you can see they've suddenly got away but at this stage pigeons quite like pea leaves but they find it hard to eat them when the peas are this big. They could do if they were really a abundant pigeons but here there aren't that many pigeons but the main point here is that it was really worth protecting those peas when they were small and that's often the case uh, think in terms of protecting your seedlings and your teenage plants once they approach adulthood they become more um, able to look after themselves in the case of these peas they're quite tall now so <laughs> it's quite hard for birds to kind of hang on there and peck away Aphids are a difficult pest at certain times of year on certain crops. There's a very strong and classic example of here of aphid damage to cabbage, but not all cabbage. There are some of the cabbages here grown actually in no-dig soil. This is a dig-no-dig -dig experiment where I'm comparing the effect of growing same crop, no-dig and dig. And the no-dig cabbages are actually pretty healthy. And there's more damage on the dug bed where aphids have got into some of the cabbage plants and they bring in a virus you see this mottling pale yellow the leaves losing color and that's almost certainly a virus of some kind that the aphids in injecting into the plant to suck the sap they've also brought a disease with them and we can see the aphids here they they tend to hide under leaves because they don't like moisture so that's why it can be effective to water them as long as you can get water on them because that rub, rubs the water rubs and washes them down onto the ground and then a few of them will crawl back but you can mitigate the damage uh, apart from if they bring in virus mostly aphids are short-term pests because at this time of year this is may um, they're building up and then the predators will arrive very soon ladybirds are breeding now so their numbers are not yet able to cope with all these aphids but they soon will so 
I find that in June, July onwards, aphids are much less of a problem than at this time of year. So it shows how pests can vary at different times of year. The kind of leaf damage you have is a clue to pests that might be causing it. And here is an example of bird damage, for example, pecking around the edge quite severe in that case. Or there's a beetroot leaf, beetroot spinach. Again, these are loved by sparrows. If it was pigeons, it would be quite similar, but more angular, maybe pecking around the edge. Here I have some examples of the dreaded slug. That's a basil leaf actually, where the um, slug holes tend to be quite large, almost like punched holes, often in the middle of a leaf and often in older leaves, like this, where the leaf's already aged, you can see it's going yellow. Slugs roll in nature, I believe, is <laughs> kind of recycling agents. They're clearing up the debris turning it into food for the next generation of plants. So if you leave old leaves like these lying around in your garden, these are all old cabbage leaves, then slugs are going to be attracted to that and think, hey, food, maybe hang around. And also as these old leaves fall down on the ground and sit there like that, that keeps the soil moist underneath and the slugs can hide there by day and come out and eat by night. So what I do is go through my crops of cabbages, broccoli, calabrese, cauliflower for example, also spinach and lettuce sometimes depending what's growing, removing older leaves like this and that means less hiding place for slugs, less slug damage. It also looks nicer. And lastly here we have a bit of wood life damage. So this is where I've got where I'm growing this cucumber, it's been on a hotbed full of wood lice as it happens. Mostly that I can get it by with them, but sometimes they chew a stem like that. I just happen to know that's wood lice damage because I've seen it before and there aren't, there's nothing else there that could cause it, but it's just another little thing to look out for. In my garden, I use very few products. I find the best strategy for pests is to know they're going to come and use covers to prevent them eating crops and provide minimum habitat. But there are some pests that are more difficult and butterflies are certainly one, particularly the ones that lay their eggs for caterpillars to eat. Brassica leaves, for example, there's also but butterflies that lay eggs on tomato leaves in certain areas and um, vine leaves even. Uh, leek moth is another one. And this is a product which you can buy as a powder, dry powder, about two grams in a teaspoon like that, level spoon. It's just a small spoon mixed with water and sprayed on leaves will kill. Well, what it does is it gives indigestion to caterpillars which eat the um, leaves that you've sprayed and it doesn't affect any other mammals it's not harmful to chickens for example if they the leaves nor to us obviously um, other insects so it's only caterpillars that get indigestion and then die and it is remarkably efficient and in this climate for example i, I find three times a year is enough i put it on mid-july um, early to mid-august and early september and uh, those three applications give me mostly clean cabbage, brassica, salad, whatever it leaves right the way through the summer. You can save a significant amount of pest damage by sowing at the best time for each particular harvest you want to make. So for example this is springtime now and it's an example of why well, it's not such a good idea to grow rocket patch oil, mizuna, oriental leaves, brassica, small brassica leaves for salad because they are very prone to flea beetle damage at this time of year. Flea beetles are little hopping insects which make these very round and small holes and lots of them in young brassica leaves right through spring and into summer. So rocket 
salad rocket here is an example of a salad that I reckon to sow in August, so late summer. And then it crops beautifully through the autumn. It's after its flowering time as well. And there's a lot less flea beetles around, so you get really healthy leaves. Whereas in the spring, instead of rocket, I find it's really good to grow pea shoots because they are so healthy at this time of year. This is their season. This is when peas are growing really strongly, healthily, abundantly. And so we're har harvesting many times pea shoots off the same plants at this time of year. And I don't sow these in the summer. So they're a spring crop for me because I find to crop late summer and autumn pea shoots, you tend to get more mildew. The pea plant's just not so healthy and abundant. Companion planting can help plants to have an environment where there's a better balance of pest and predators. So for example, here between the two rows of tomatoes, I have planted French marigolds, which are quite small. They are just gonna stay that kind of size, just taking up a bit of space here. And they have quite a strong aroma, which is reckoned to maybe deter whitefly. <laughs> to be honest, I'm not too sure, but I have found over many decades of doing this that they grow very happily with the tomatoes. They kind of seem to like each other. They don't, neither one gets in the way of the other and I have very few aphids on my tomatoes. Now that's also related to all the other things that are going on here. Um, no dig, good mulch of compost and so on. But all these little things add up. There's not really, I don't think, any one thing you can do to be sure of not having any pests, but doing something like this, which as well as probably being beneficial, looks really nice, what not to like. And there's other things you can do of a similar nature in here, like up there I'm growing some dwarf French beans in amongst the miracles with cucumbers. And I find that works well because the dwarf beans crop very quickly through June. They're finished by the end of June, by which time the cucumbers are getting big and would be shading them out anyway. So that's another version of companion planting where you're cropping something with another thing. And they get on well and, you know, maybe that helps keep the pest down. One doesn't really know, but it's just fitting things in when you can is all good. Here's an example of another method you can use to reduce habitat for aphids because these broad or fava beans are susceptible to black fly, which is a kind of aphid, and they land in the main growing point or tip of the plant. So this little bit here, the, the new leaves clustering in the centre at the top of the plant, so you can pinch it out. You can take that top out like that. That is really nice to eat. That's a taste of broad bean, tender leaves, well before the broad beans are ready. And what this does is it reduces landing place for aphids and encourages actually also the development of um, pods lower down. So all these flowers on these beautiful broad bean plants, which have a lovely aroma and there's lots of bees here, they are developing into pods and taking out the top encourages the plant to stop growing, which it can't do anymore, and make pods more quickly. And behind me are some broad beans which we've pinched out the tops a little while ago, so you can see they haven't got any growing points on their tips. And lower down there are some nice little pods developing. So these were broad beans that were sown last November before the winter just to overwinter as small plants whereas these were sown in the spring. Growing vegetables is great fun but that can so easily be massively damaged by pests as much as they can damage your crops so do take appropriate measures, check, get informed about what you might need at which times a year. Most of the products I've mentioned here are widely available garden centres online. Have fun with that and over to you. Happy growing. <laughs>